Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. You know how to reach us on any of our social media platforms. On Twitter, for instance, I'm at CTV Harriet. You can also tweet at Big Bosin. And, of course, at Biz Morning is the show's handle. And tweet at the Big Brother at Channels TV. Send us an email as well to businessmorning at channelstv.com. Let me quickly remind you what's going to be happening or what you should be looking out for in the month of November. We start off on a very high note. Buhari's cabinet clocks one year in office this month. Of course, uh, so many things has happened in the last one year. We'll be taking a look at them one by one in the coming days. All eyes also on the Ministry of Finance and the Debt Management Office as the federal government floats a $1 billion euro bond and the estimated, the pledged estimated 350 billion Nara fiscal spending is also expected to hit the economy this month. According to the Minister of Finance last week, that particular amount should be coming in uh, sometime this month as the federal government looks to, of course, uh, augment already spent monies for critical sectors of the economy. The Debt Management Office will be holding its monthly bond auction of federal government bonds. You want to look out for that one. And the markets are awaiting third quarter GDP from the National Bureau of Statistics as well as inflation numbers and October purchasing managers index and the final Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year. Promises to be a very interesting November. So maybe I should have said an interesting November. Welcome to an interesting November. It sounds better. It sounds more catchy. And also talking about uh, purchasing managers index according uh, to the uh, according to FBN Quest, just released uh, the October PMI, shows uh, PMI is back into positive territory with the improvement from 47.9 reading to 52.9. And they observed that there were no significant upswings across the five sub-indices. And this is in spite of the fact that most of these companies are still battling with FX issues. Let's take a look at some of those uh, indices. We have the output, we have the employment, new orders, supplies, delivery times, and stocks of purchases sub-indices. For the output, that increased from 47.5 to 53. For the employment sub-index, even though most companies reported uh, no change, given Nigeria's current business environment, companies are reluctant to take on additional labor. But this index showed that uh, this index showed that there was an improvement from 44 to 49, as well as the indices for the new orders, sub delivery, and stocks of purchases, which improved from 44 to 49, 50 to 53, and 46 to 53. So let's talk about commodities now. That has also seen a little bit of topsy-turvy movement in the recent days. I'm being joined on the program by Ada Konobi, who is an investment and economic research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company. She joins me now as we take a look at developments in the oil and gas sector. Because most, most, basically, most of the conversation that we'll be having on the program today is centered around that. A good morning to you, Ada. Thank you for coming on the show. Good morning, Harry. So give us a sense of the domestic oil markets in, in relation to demand and supply of premium spirit and, and diesel. These are, of course, very strong driving factors and, of course, make up the burning issues that you talk about regularly. Well, um, petrol prices are still relatively flat as, um, at 143 and Naira per litre. And uh, the main, I mean, we know that 30% of our forex allocation goes to the import of petroleum products uh, and refined petroleum products anyway. So, well, like we all say, it's like it's like a general anthem. Forex, uh, forex allocation still remains a critical uh, a sector for most of, of our imports. Um, well, taking it now to the global market, oil prices have now dropped below its resistance point. Uh, it's trading about to about $48 per barrel. This is because of the um, inner squabbles between OPEC members and some sort of discord in terms of uh, allocating production quotas. So before you allocate uh, quotas, you need to know what each member is producing. And a lot of uh, uh, oil producers are saying, you know what, I want to be a part of the exemption, uh, people exempt, uh, the countries exempted. Uh, Iraq has said, 
I'm not going to cut down production. I will actually increase production because I need the funds to fight ISIS. Uh, Kazakhstan has said as well that they're not going to cut down production. Russia initially agreed to cut back on production, but now they're saying that all, the most they can do is freeze production at, um, at current levels. So it's, you know, there's, there's still some sort of a disagreement between with this meeting coming on in November 3rd, would it actually um, yield, uh, will it be successful? So that's yeah. why, you know, it's just that negative sentiment. So it it just gives you an idea of probably what's going to happen when the meeting actually happens you know starts yes. there's already there's the discordant tunes being sang and the markets are just you know just sitting down yes. looking and waiting and taking the uh, advantage for some the market is watching very very closely because the meeting in Vien the meeting will actually give way you know for oil prices uh, bearing in mind as well the uh, recent um, economic data that came out in the US showed it w there was an improvement in GDP growth which sort of gave some back to uh, the uh, to the dollar so the, the dollar is stronger it kind of um, discourages more imports of a dollar denominated commodity so that's why we're seeing oil prices trading below a fifty dollars per barrel um, so it seems like the book the bears have taken over the bulls and um, we we'll, we'll don't know how long this is going to go for recounts are still going up uh, oil inventories are still you know like I said like we always say we need to see a significant decline in US crude oil inventories to you know to push oil prices back up and we back to Nigeria we depend on uh, well, we are more production sensitive than price sensitive, seeing that our production from January to um, to date has declined about 22%, mm -hmm. which is an average of 1.5 million barrels per day. And we've lost approximately $7 billion, um, which is not too good because of the recurrent uh, militant attack in the Niger Delta region. Um, the president will meet with the Niger uh, Delta militants today, mm -hmm. uh, later today, and this will be the first time that the president will engage physically with the militants and we expect um, other governors, ministers and political leaders in the Niger Delta region to be in the meeting as well. Um, this is a biting issue. For that to happen, that means we, we really depend on our production. Our production needs to go back to what it is because um, investments are not coming in as we expected. The currency is still depreciating food prices and most uh, commodity prices that are that, that depend on the dollar are going off the roof. So it is a biting it is a biting issue. Yeah, because you know last last week during the launch of uh, the seven big yes. wins, the roadmap for the oil and gas industry, the president actually said that we need to make sure that the oil and gas industry is functioning well yes. because you're looking for revenue where are you going to get revenue if not from the oil and gas sector which we know that even though it seems as if oil prices have started fluctuating again mm -hmm. and causing you know a lot of discomfort for people yes. it's still a very critical sector that needs to be up and running so for you what do you think will be the first first thing that they will talk about at this meeting well it is reported. Well, it is reported that the. It seems like they're going to uh, give an additional 35 billion naira to the amnesty program, but that's all for now. They haven't really disclosed um, what exactly we've spoken about. And in the meeting last week as well, um, there, there seems like there's going to be an additional 10 billion dollars for infrastructure development in the Niger Delta region. But there's still some sort of debate as to is that you know is that going to work out or not. So um, we'll hopefully we we'll, we we'll pray or we fingers crossed that the meeting today will actually yield results because if the um, oil, if, if the terminals are back up, uh, there's a high risk that these Niger Delta militants will go back again and cripple our production. So there has to be some sort of agreement between the government and the Niger Delta militants so that we can move our production back up. And also this comes at a time when the federal government is ramping up clean up of the you know, Ogoni, yes. uh, Ogoni land as well. So all of this just shows very clear concerted efforts by the federal government towards that sector mm -hmm. and we're hoping that uh, all parties concerned take this in good faith and of course listen to what the president has to say but what's your outlook for the for prices going by the increase in u.s crude inventories and of course impact on the market well oil prices in the in, in the global market will still remain um, it will still be below fifty dollars per barrel pending the um, outcome of the meeting in vienna bear in mind that we have to look at recounts we have to look at uh, um, the u.s the EI, the EIA uh, frequently release how much inventories have declined or you know gone up. So these are indicators for uh, the future for oil prices. But for now, expected to trade between. Forty-eight to fifty dollars per barrel. So for Nigeria, of course, taking a look at uh, all of this uh, global play, even though uh, we're, we're trying to find our feet again, yes. you know, outside of all the, the challenges. 
Yeah. What's your expectation? Well, there's still a debate. Can we actually get up to 1.9 million barrels per day? There's, you know, there's that big question. Is that possible? It is possible if the, you know, if the outcome of the meeting today is, is, is positive, then we kind of, we will restore some sort of confidence between the IOCs and, you know, the people in the region. We can go back to work. We can drill oil. We can export. And this is even coming as a, at a time when the Asian refiners are demanding for West African crude. So they are, you know, they are off the maintenance season. So they actually demand for a lot of oil so we could actually tap into at this right now by increasing our production shipping it out to the US to Asia and getting our revenues back up so we can plug you know kind of bridge the gap between uh, the exchange rate disparity that we have right now but well, believe it or not Nigeria is usually one of those countries that drive developments uh, in terms of market news yes. and how you know um, investors perceive mm -hmm. the markets and the rest of it so do you think that this latest move to have dialogue by the you know the, the dialogue between the federal government mm -hmm. Niger Delta militants representatives of Niger Delta militants mm -hmm. and representatives of that very key sector do you think this might affect share price award well it, it, it is sending a positive signal in the sense that this is the first time the president himself is having um, engaging with the Niger Delta militants, so that shows some sort of seriousness on his part. International investors and uh, companies are watching as well to see the outcome of this meeting. Nigeria still remains a huge um, market. There's still lots of opportunities in Nigeria, but just the um, the uh, political instability and the you know discord. But if if this goes well, we we'll see some sort of um, influx back into the Nigeria market. So finger crossed, fingers crossed. Yes. Looking at the market, uh, you're expecting it to continue to hover around 47, 48? Yes, 40, 40? 48, 50. I mean, it's going to swing um, uh, back and forth until. But I think the meeting in um, in the meeting in November 30th will give a clear direction as to where oil prices will go from there. But we know the oil price is extremely sensitive to any news, mm -hmm. you know. So, but for now, we expect to try um, a slight trade between those figures. Ada, thank you so much for coming on the program Thanks this morning. Me. Ada Akonobi is an economic researcher and lives with financial derivatives company. Taking a look there at issues developing in the oil and gas industry. Let's quickly take you through some of the stocks that we track for you on the program. Talking about the seven uh, oil and gas stocks. Connor yesterday finished unchanged. Only about 961 units of this particular equity were traded by investors and we saw that closing at 35 naira 90 cobble. But 40 oil was off 0.02 percent with marginal drop to close at 120 naira with 131,463 units exchanged by investors. MRS had the highest uh, well percentage increase for the first time in a very long time, that notched up 8.38%, closing at 43 narrow 35 cobble. But total appreciated 4.55% to close at 345 narrow. Seplat was unchanged at 380. Owando off 5% to close at 400 and 4, 4 naira 94 cobble. Business Morning continues in just a moment. We've still got our focus on the oil and gas sector. We're talking about the gas policy next. Join us again.